Hello, this is Justin from the Tech Train here again, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these paint splatter effects in Microsoft PowerPoint. You can use these paint splatters and put any picture you like inside the splatter of paint, and even have brush stroke effects as well. Let's see how we can create this effect. <laughs> So the first thing that you'll actually need to do for this tutorial is to go online and download some new fonts. It's up to you which ones, and I'll put links to all of them in the description below the video. Uh, but for example, the ones I'm using in this tutorial include this font, uh, font here, which is WC Rhesus B. Um, this is free to download, it's free for personal use, and it's also free for commercial use. Uh, so you see this font here has some really good paint splats, like paintball splats, something like that. Uh, another one that I'm using is this one. It's called Split Splat Splodge. Uh, this again is free for personal use and has quite a range of uh, different creative splat effects. And another one that I'm going to be using, which seems perhaps a little odd, um, but you'll see why I'm using this one, is the one called Chinese Takeaway. Again, free for personal use. And that one's quite good as well. So I'm going to show how to use all three of these um, in your uh, PowerPoint. So let's start with a new blank slide. Uh, one thing just to say though is that when you download and install a font you will need to close PowerPoint and then reopen PowerPoint otherwise the fonts don't tend to appear in the font list. So first thing I'm going to do is click on text box and I'm going to type in the letter H for the moment. Uh, but we can type anything we like and I'll show you how to do this in a different way in a second. So just an example here. So there's a letter H, it's clearly a text box uh, that we can type in. Uh, but I'm going to select that text box and in the font selection uh, drop down list here, I'm going to go down to that WC Rhesus. It's not very clear in the font list because uh, of course the fonts in this list are written in that script and since this doesn't have any letters it's just symbols it does look a bit odd but we can see that there and when I select it that letter H now appears as a paint splat. Now you might not know which letter you want to use so an alternative way of doing that is to click inside your text box go to insert and then cl uh, click on symbol at the top as long as you choose the font that you want to use, so in this case WC Rhesus, uh, then you can see all the different text styles, all the different font styles, and choose the splat that you want to use. So I'm going to stick with this one, the letter H for the moment, and I'm going to make this as large as I can whilst fitting it neatly onto the slide. Something like that will do fine. Uh, now, next step is that we need to draw a rectangle around this um, letter, effectively. So I'm going to go to Insert Shapes and choose the rectangle. Uh, what you want to do here is just to make sure that the rectangle you draw includes or covers all of the paint splat. Now, it might be that you've got little bits uh, around the edge, little tiny dots that you want to get rid of later, that's absolutely fine, we can do that later on, but for the moment let's just select the entire um, paint splat. Now when we let go, uh, this rectangle of course is in front of that text box, so we're now going to right click on it and send it to the back. So now we can see our paint splat in front of the rectangle, but the paint, uh, paint splat is still just simply text, and we need to convert that into a shape. To do this what we're going to do is select everything. So I'm just going to be clicking and dragging my mouse over both of those two um, shapes, those two rectangles, the shape at the back and the text box to select both items. And with both items selected I'm now going to go to the drawing tools toolbar at the top and click on format. Now on the left hand side we have the merge shapes menu. And if I click on that, I'm going to select Intersect. Intersect simply means uh, retain only the parts of those two shapes which overlap. 
So by doing that, the only two parts of the shape that overlap is of course the part of the blue rectangle which happens to also overlap parts of this text. When we do that, it looks as though nothing's really happened. All it appears is that we've got rid of the blue rectangle. But actually what we've done is we've converted this uh, text into a shape, not a picture, but a shape, and that's quite important. So I can't click inside this now and start typing. I can't change that letter. It is no longer a letter, it is just a shape. And because it is a shape, we can fill it. So with this shape selected, what I'm going to do now is uh, go to the Drawing Tools toolbar into Format, go on to Shape Fill, and of course we can fill it with uh, any colour we like. It is, as I say, a shape, so we have complete control um, over that. But if we go down to Picture, um, and I'm going to choose a picture from File, uh, let's choose this one of the, uh, the birds in the dawn sunrise, so I'm going to double-click that, and there we are, that shape appears inside the paint splat. Now it might be that that looks absolutely perfect and that's exactly what you want. It's unlikely though, and certainly in this case that's not really what I want. It's not quite positioned correctly. There's a couple of things wrong with it. First of all, the main focus of the sunset is sort of just sneaking to this bottom left corner here, and I really want that more central. Uh, the other problem is that the picture I used was a landscape picture, but this paint splat is almost a portrait orientation. So my picture has got squashed widthways quite badly. All those birds uh, have got squashed and are much, much narrower than they should be. So what I'm going to do now with this shape selected is I'm going to go to the top and not the drawing tools anymore, but the picture tools. The drawing tools governs the paint splat shape. The picture tools is where we can control the picture inside that paint splat. So we click, uh, click on picture tools, format, and then on the right hand side, select crop. Now this can get a little bit tricky because we've actually got two shapes now. When we go into crop, if I click on that picture at the back and drag it, you see we've effectively got two things here. One is this rectangle that contains our paint splat, and this does have the crop handles on it, but we're not going to use them. Uh, we're not going to touch those, we're not going to affect this frame at all. All we're looking at is this picture uh, item, which is at the back. This has this grey background to it. And you'll notice that it has these white circles on the corners and edges. So we can grab those and drag them out to uh, try and restore the original uh, aspect ratio, the original proportion. And we can also grab the corner and reduce this or increase the size. Now one thing you've got to be careful of is to make sure that you don't have parts of your paint splat, like this one at the top here, that's empty. So you want to make sure that when you are resizing and repositioning it, that you're getting all of the little paint splats included. So I'm going to drag it down a little bit like that, so I've got these two at the bottom as well, and then position it so that my sunset is nicely in the middle, and I've got these two little birds here in this extra blob, uh, and everything looks good, that's all included, I'm happy with that, so I'm now going to click on crop, and there we are, we now have our picture inside our paint splat, which looks really cool. I can add a background to the slide now, and that background would, of course, as we fully expect, if I just choose this one here, um, be visible inside and around all those paint splats. So we can now uh, resize this, we can make it bigger or smaller, we can reposition it anywhere on our slide, we can rotate it, animate it, uh, it is just as any normal shape. So. Uh, that's that bit. Now the other part to show you here is this effect here. You'll see this looks more like a, uh, a paint brush, a paint stroke effectively here, and you won't find that shape in any of these uh, paint splat fonts. So how did I do this? Um, and also at the same time as showing you how I did this one, I'm going to show you how you'd be able to get rid of these extra little tiny blobs that you may not want. So the next thing I'm going to do is add another text box and I'm going to type a, a capital T here and then I'm going to make this capital T 
much, much bigger. By the way, I'm increasing the font size, just in case you don't know this little uh, keyboard shortcut, by using the control key and the square brackets, which are just to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. Left square bracket reduces the font size, right one increases it. So with the uh, T down nice and big, I'm going to change the font size to that Chinese takeaway that I showed you earlier. And here you might just start to recognize this bottom section here, which is the same as this stroke here. But we've got this brush bit across the top as well, which we don't have here. And it's not hidden at the top. It genuinely is just gone. It's not part of this shape. So how do we get rid of parts of blobs that we don't want so we can create this uh, brush stroke? And this Chinese um, takeaway font is a really good one for different brush strokes. You can see those different letters there um, do have some, some nice little brush strokes that you can use, curves, lines, uh, all that kind of stuff. So first of all, what I'm going to do is having put the text in there, and again, it is just simply uh, text. I'm going to now draw a rectangle that surrounds that text, send that rectangle to the back, and then I'm going to select both the rectangle and the text box. Now in the drawing tools format toolbar, I'm going to come to merge shapes and choose intersect. And that has now converted the text letter T into a shape. So I can now, uh, in the Format toolbar, go to Shape Fill, choose Picture. I'm going to choose the uh, Cityscape here. So I'm going to choose that Cityscape. And there we are, that Cityscape is now inside the T. But there's a few problems. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, we've got this bit along the top here that we don't want. So how do we get rid of that? It will be easy to think that we'd be going to crop, but that actually won't work uh, for this type of setup. So what we have to do instead is to subtract this part of the picture. To do that, what I'm going to do is click on insert, choose, um, I'm going to choose actually rather than a rectangle because you might find that rectangles aren't always the best one. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose freeform. Uh, you'll see why. I'm going to click on freeform and then I'm simply going to click all around the part of the letter that I want to get rid of, like that. So you could do the same thing for any of these extra little tiny blobs around the outside that you might want to get rid of. Now, having drawn that rectangle, what I'm going to do is select the shape that I want to fill or have filled, then hold down the shift key and select this shape here. It's important you do it in that order because what you're going to do is say, take this shape and then subtract from it anything that's under this shape. So with them both selected in the drawing tools toolbar, left hand side, merge shapes, we're now going to choose subtract. And that subtracts away from this shape, the bit at the top. So now we have our brush stroke. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, adjust the picture because again, you can see that it's got very, very squashed. The original picture was a very wide landscape picture and it's got squashed terribly. So uh, the drawing tools, remember, is for the shape. Picture tools here on the right is for the picture. So we click on format and choose crop. And we can drag that picture anywhere we like, um, just so we can see that frame clearly. I'm going to stretch that out so that it is um, more normal proportions. And then I can move it around and rescale it so that it is exactly as I want. So I'm going to just for this demonstration, I think something like that will do. So we'll just have it like that. There we go. So I'm happy with the um, position and I'm happy with the, uh, the picture there. I can click crop and there we are. We've now got that picture inside our paintbrush. And again, we can do whatever we like with this, uh, this picture. We can uh, rotate it, we can um, distort it, stretch it, adjust it, animate it, whatever. Uh, you can add effects, you've got borders. Um, the border doesn't always look brilliant, but it's an option. Uh, you've got picture effects, so you've got the usual shadow and, and things like that. Um, so it acts and behaves just like any other shape in your PowerPoint presentation. So there we are, how to create paint splatter effects in Microsoft PowerPoint. 
Uh, I hope you liked that uh, tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. That would be terrific. Uh, it does make a difference and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please make sure that you do subscribe and click the bell and then you'll know exactly when a new video pops up live on the channel. So make sure you click like, don't forget to subscribe. Any questions you have or suggestions or comments, do leave them below. I do try and respond to every comment as soon as I can. And thank you very much indeed for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.